Hello, and welcome to Reader Watch. We're your hosts. I'm Ashton. I'm Michelle. And I'm Alex. And in this episode, we'll be discussing Ender's Game. By the way, massive spoilers ahead. We're going to be discussing every single plot point of the book and movie. Typically, I'm a watcher. Um, I like to go to movies first. Uh, but in this case, I actually read the book first. How about you two? I, I'm a reader. I like to read my books. And that is the case here. I read the book and watched the movie all within the past week because I had never seen or read anything to do with this before. So this was very exciting for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, the answer to that question used to be really easy, but they're adapting everything. So it, it's basically, oh, I read it first. Um, but not when it comes to Ender's Game. Ender's Game, I saw the movie. I, I really like the concept. And, uh, you, you know, not really the movie itself, but the concept was great. So I, I read the book. And then I listened to the audiobook because I really enjoyed it. Wow. Next yeah. level. Audiobook. Yep. Yeah. And for those of you that are unfamiliar, Ender's Game follows child prodigy Ender Wigan, a boy listed in, enlisted into an army training program for children. Uh, the book follows his ruthless training regiment in the International Fleet's orbital space station as he, along with his fellow trainees, are trained to become the leaders needed to command the military fleets against the invasive alien bugger armies. So I guess kind of get, get, getting a point that you discussed out of the way, I actually really liked how they adapted uh, adapted the book to the movie. Um, I, I, I think they did a surprisingly good job for the runtime they had, especially for how like dense that book is. Like it's not yeah. a long book by any means, but it's a surprisingly dense book. I don't know, it, what, it, what, what, yeah, what were your first impressions? So I just want to say it did not get a lot of love like I, no. I I wasn't yeah I, I wasn't that down on it when the movie came out I'm like oh, it, it was a pretty good movie I'm sure the book does it a lot more justice because it, it felt kind of lacking uh mm -hmm. in in a few aspects but uh, uh but, but no the, the movie was, was solid enough you, you get one of your uh, typical Harrison Ford I I D G A S uh performances uh <laughs> that he's known for uh but uh, but everyone else is is, 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 pretty, is pretty good uh yeah yeah it was it was interesting because I obviously read it first and then watched it so reading it I was like how are they going to make this a movie because there are parts of it that would like I think draw on for a really long time if it was in a movie mm -hmm. but the the adaptation to the movie was it was okay for me personally because like having just got off of reading the book I was just hyper aware of everything that was cut mm -hmm. but I truly couldn't picture the way it would have all ended up in a movie anyways Besides if they'd done like a like limited series or something of it, I feel like that could have been cooler. Um, just with each of the times that Ender changed armies or changed like groups that he was in, I feel like that could have been a really cool because that was kind of segmented within the book that way. And I think that could have been really cool to see maybe like more episodic because they had to cut out like so, so much. And the, the thing like, I'll start off the things that are different. The thing that like I was surprised that was so cut out was Ender building his own little like training group and mm. the kind of the repercussions of that. And like it in the book, it built more into like Bonzo's dislike of him because it kind of felt really random in the movie where there wasn't enough background for him to try to kill Ender and for like their fight to play out the way it did. But when Ender was training all of the people from Dragon Army with some of the launches and like a whole bunch of people were kind of joining him and he was able to like create all these friendships because they don't want to necessarily say that word but alliances I would say um it was so impactful in the book and I really loved it so then at the end when all of his tune leaders show up to like do the battle school with him that moment's really really awesome because you get all of these returning characters that I think in the movie that didn't play out play out the same and didn't have the same impact for me personally yeah the movie really is um hyper condensed because the book takes place like over literally years um, where you get like these, these various stages of Ender's growth and training, um, especially with like his interaction with the different characters and the people that he inevitably gets like, you know, those, those antagonistic relationships with. Whereas the movie, it's like what, a single year um, from his, the time he's enlisted to the final battle with the, with the alien army, which by the way, I didn't know how to name until I saw the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, the, the buggers yeah the, yeah the book the book calls them uh buggers like exclusively in the first yeah. book but the movie uses the term formix which um oh. 
which I guess uses, which I guess was introduced in later books. Um, so that was really interesting for me. Um, but yeah, like, I don't know, like it's, it, it's, it was also like interesting the way they did it. Cause I mean, it, you know, nature of adaptation, there's only so much runtime you have over the course of like, even it could have been a four hour movie for, for that matter. And it would still need to be so hyper condensed for just how much, how, how, like how many stages of growth are in there? Like, I mean, again, like it, it's, it's, it's not a long novel by any means. I'm pretty sure I read this over the course of a couple of days and I'm a slow reader, mind you. Um, but like each chapter does contain so much narrative weight that I don't know that there would be a way to put that into a single movie and convey everything you need to, personally. I, there was one thing that, that was uh, noticeably missing and I think it was probably for the better and that's the Giants game. Uh, mm. in, in, in the book, uh, it's basically just this video game that, uh, that's supposed to teach trainees uh, how to lose, right? Or how, or how they react to, to to losing a game and uh and there's a lot more to it in the book because ender does find a way to win and he continues and and there's like something else at work there that's uh, a mystery to the readers uh and and it, it's really obvious that like th that's just something you, you could you could have left out and still told the same story and like if mm -hmm. this was adapted in the 90s it would have had like some i don't know if anyone's watched the lawnmower man but like those sort of like graphics of like polygon shaped uh, <laughs> computer like like really <laughs> stiff uh, things so 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 like I, I guess it's a good thing that uh that those were kind of not in there uh but yeah like this is tailor made for audiences like just the the, the concept alone like, like this is your harry potter your hunger games your like and everything this uh this like child prodigy that's so good at, at what they do and they excel to like the, this huge level that like audiences should have taken to it. Uh, either, like, because this is the sci-fi version of that trope uh, that mm -hmm. we've seen over and over again, but it, it just didn't resonate. And, and, and like, that's been like a huge mystery to me. Why? Like, could it have been uh, Asa Butterfield uh, who played Ender Wiggin with like, is his charisma kind of like, is, is he, he kind of weird? I don't know. Like, like maybe he lacks yeah, presence. But... I think I, I think I don't think it's necessary that he lacks presence, but I think Ender as a character isn't mm -hmm. like because in the book you get the inner monologue, you understand Ender more as a character for sure. But then that doesn't translate into the movie because then it's just Ender kind of yelling at people that do stuff, and you don't see him doubting himself as much and you don't see necessarily as much of the struggle he kind of just shows up has this problem with authority a little bit and just kind of goes from there where in the book it's like the growth of the character is absolutely huge and you see him kind of fighting with the fact that he doesn't want to be a killer he doesn't want to be like his brother which they reference in the movie as like two to three different lines but that's a huge character point for him in the book that makes him relatable and uh, like more empathetic and that sort of thing and even his the building of relationships between him and the other characters because in the movie they introduce Bean immediately which mm. I cannot for the life of me understand because when that first happened I thought they weren't going to introduce a lie as a character because I thought Bean was going to kind of be both those characters in the movie but then they do introduce a lie who is Ender's first friend in the book and kind of introduces him to the idea of friendship because he's never had a friend before um but I forget what I'm even going where I'm going with the friendship <laughs> thing honestly but just as a character you don't get to see him develop these friends develop these relationships in the movie so as a character I don't really care about him at all and like he has a little well, meltdown at the end of like you made me do genocide and I'm like yeah true but it doesn't have this weight to it because I'm not protective of this character in any way whereas in the book I'm like you're a child protect the child he's so cute and you can hear his inner struggles and I, I they didn't adapt that very well they tried to with him emailing valentine a bunch of times like here's my inner thought i'm just gonna email my sister but even that was done quite poorly and um, yeah I, i'm disappointed that they didn't develop his character more to have him yeah. be this leading character well i mean even in the book correct me if i'm wrong here but he without the inner monologue he does come across to the other people as being abrasive anti-authoritative and you know, just kind of not necessarily being a very relatable person. It's because of that inner monologue that you're missing 
yeah. in the movie that that he does come across like that. So I think I, I do understand like why people might think he wouldn't be a necessarily relatable character, but like. Mm-hmm. And like, the, this kind of relates to that. And it's another issue I have. In terms of the way he leads Dragon Army, in the book, they talk a lot about the way that he leads with five platoons, which is unheard of for the other armies. They don't do formations because he actually trains each of his platoon leaders, toon leaders to have their own brain. Because like, that's his whole thing is I'm not like I'm the smartest person and these people will think of things that I won't think of and that's what Bean represents as a character of he's like this new fresh creative thinker that Ender understands how to use so in that because he gives his platoon leaders in the book so much autonomy within the battles to kind of make their own decisions that shows him more as a leader Whereas in the movie, they just gloss over all of that. And the only reference you get to that is when they're like, we're going to do a formation. We've never done that before. They won't expect it. And then Bean has this little moment with the rope, which in the book is such an amazing moment, like of him pulling back on the rope and how he thought of that idea and how they practice and all of that. And they just like kind of threw that all into that one battle with the two armies, which in the movie didn't work for me at all. I was so confused and like the formation they were doing I I don't know it wasn't what I pictured of them being in a little cluster like I did not that's not what I pictured it to be so that whole fight for me just didn't work in the movie at all whereas I really want like I hoped it was going to be awesome well they also changed the game in the movie uh, so you needed to get one person in but then like you know I don't know if I I thought it was just a matter of like them streamlining the game for for the sake of the movie because what is it they needed five people originally like in the book yeah, four to open it and one to pass through. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah, I, I, I to, to just stick on the point with, with Ender, like there's a lot of drama lacking with the character in the movie because uh, like he's kind of like a Batman uh, type where like he thinks five steps ahead of everybody else. And plus you add like the whole Ray mystique, Ray from Star Wars that everyone hated, the, the, the Mary Sue thing where like they can't mm-hmm. fail. So like it's just a combination for like you, you, you know an off-putting character. So so you, you guys probably uh, got that one right uh, on on like the the issue with uh, the unlikable main character. Uh, as, as for the game, it was uh, it, all I knew uh, was because uh, because I saw the movie first, like oh anti grab thing, and then I'm reading the book, like oh the anti grab stuff, cool. So it it all worked for me, but 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 yeah, no no, I I do remember that yeah the the, the rules were a bit off. And uh, I, I suppose it's more like uh, cutting room floor stuff, just to save time, maybe. Mm-hmm. I suppose. Yeah, I can see that. Um, but actually, like you, you, uh, Michelle, you're talking about like how they, how many characters they introduced immediately off the bat. I guess that's another major point to bring up is that like because the movie, the plot was so hyper condensed. Like they, like in the in the book, uh, like it doesn't Ender start off like six years old? Like he's that young, and they they grow into younger teens. Whereas, like in the movie, everyone is introduced at that age, and that's where it all starts. Mm-hmm. Um, which I guess is another like weird. I know that was that was definitely a little bit jarring for me, uh, having having come from the book to the movie, is that you don't get that the, like those additional stages of introducing people into Ender's life, and especially mm-hmm. like you know with you know being a lie Petra like you know where they're coming at is the very first points in development, mm-hmm. although um i kind of need to give props to the cast for the way they did portray their characters um especially with the way with the direction they were given i know you uh alex you mentioned harrison ford i thought he was yeah. perfect for that role okay <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> it, 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 it's just that in every movie i see him but like, like when you see him in like blade runner 2049 like he comes oh, yeah. out he's got, got like the old man t-shirt it's like oh this guy doesn't care wait like you, you just give me my paycheck so it, it 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 is me, but 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 no, you're right about the cast. Like uh, Ben Kingsley as um, Mazer Rackham, mm. awesome. That was so cool be, because mm. I, to me, I don't see Ben Kingsley like looking that, you know, tough. Uh, but, mm. but but like he definitely does in this one. Uh, yeah, he, he, even the younger cast, uh, they did a really good job. Haley Stanfield, she yeah, was, uh, she was, yeah, uh, I, Petra, yeah. Petra, yeah I, uh, I don't know how I didn't recognize her when watching Ender's Game. But like, yeah. That's, <laughs> <laughs> but she she actually does like nail that that Petra role. Also, um, who was that to play Bean? Uh, Aramis Knight. Like, I thought he did like really well for how standoffish Bean is in the book. 
Um, you know, same thing with um, Ally, Dink, um, Bonzo. Like, he played a perfect little prick, didn't he? He was <laughs> he, great. He was. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, he has that, like, tiny gangster kind of uh, Joe Pesci vibe uh, <laughs> yeah. in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and actually, like, two, two casting choices that really surprised me for how much I liked them. Um, Valentine and Peter, characters mm. that you in no way got to touch on in the movie, like, which I think is another major point, like, as much as, much as they cut the game, uh, because, like, in the book, Valentine and Peter have their whole, like, taking over subplot. the world thing. <laughs> yeah, literally, via, like, what, the anonymous internet postings, going on, yeah. going on space Reddit and taking over the world. <laughs> Um, I can't imagine how they would have included that and had it honestly add anything to this movie. Yeah. Because a lot of like the subtext about war and just like the general themes of the movie were kind of lost in the movie versus the book, where it's just like space fights, let's go. And it doesn't have this overall like idea of war and like the whole general concept of like killing everybody to stop future battles. Like they say it, but it doesn't land the same way. So I think the whole idea of this like political situation happening back on earth where like the, what is it? Head, I don't know, hegemony. I don't know how to say the word hegemony. What is that word? I don't know how to say it. It's, it's one of those two pronunciations. I have no idea either. <laughs> Whatever that is, like that whole thing. And then Russia's doing crazy stuff and all of this extra political stuff that's happening, knowing that when the war ends, there's going to be another war on earth has this additional like density to it. And then, when Ender eventually wins, there is war on Earth and he can't even come home for a while because people are trying to, they're all fighting and it's this whole thing and they just, that's all straight up removed from the movie, which I think works in the movie's favor completely. Yeah. But then you have these characters of Valentine and Peter who I think do a great job with the tiny little bit they're given when they're such massive characters in the book and just the mm. development, particularly I'd say for Valentine because of the way she ends up with Ender at the end and they go off planet and that whole story um, where they just, they cut that and kind of put Petra more or less in there instead. Um, I think I think that was a bit of a miss, but I couldn't imagine it happening in the movie without adding the entire Valentine Peter subplot, which wouldn't work, so. Yeah, because I mean, the, the, uh, like such a big thing with the book is that it, it is this, almost like massive political statement on on war and like the nature of war and politics and how there's those, those interplay and like you know even like approaching from multiple sides of of a war um which i think would be impossible to touch on without getting into without really diving into the lock and demosthenes um supply and even like going back to the giants game which directly connect which, which is almost like as, as a direct bridge between ender and the bugger the bugger queens Mm -hmm. which like they, they they touch on in the movie but like it's it's a whole thing in in, in the um in the books especially with when they get into the inner monologues on the alien perspective on mm -hmm. on war and just where they were coming from yeah i, I mean ultimately ender uh, commits genocide and we only get like three minutes of reaction time until yeah. like, oh, oh here's, the next, here's the next thing. Okay, here's the next. And, and, and like, you don't know like uh, the brutality of the, the battle school uh, or, or like the advanced battle school. I forgot what that's called, where we're like, there's in the final, uh, in the final yeah. battle school. Command yeah, school. That, yeah, command school, yeah. And, and like, that was especially harsh, but like, you, you don't really get that. It just seems like more grab ass play, you know, whatever, they're just having fun, kids mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, so, a lot of the stakes uh, kind of falls on the wayside because like, like, like you're just telling this alien invasion story. And, and like, I guess they just went too hard with the alien invasion stuff that they, they didn't really explore. Uh, and, and any of the other like uh, political ramifications or, or like, you know, like war time themes. Yeah. Even the that. emotional ramifications of the command school, um, like to what you said, Alex, the command school is so shortened in the movie, whereas in the book, like Ender is one day away from like a straight up mental breakdown. Yeah. And yeah. Petra does have a breakdown and she mm -hmm. can't, I, I don't think she's able to even participate in the final battle, if I recall correctly. Like he I, burns her out too early or something to that effect. Uh, I, I, I think she, 
if I recall, she does. She is involved in the final battle, but she's she's like out of commission for days at a time after her breakdown. Yeah. 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 And I, I thought they were actually building up to that because Petra as a character in the movie is quite more involved than Petra in the book. And mm. I don't love some of it because like the little hand-holding moment, I was like, get this romance crap out of here. <laughs> because at the end, Petra actually is romantically linked with one of the other tune leaders. I, I forget which one, which is fine. It, she doesn't need to be like, just stop it. They're children, first of all. Um, <laughs> but as a character, like she was there for the entire thing more than Eli was, more than Dean was where she's not his best friend in it, but she's a very like capable commander and he pushes her too hard in command school and she has a like mental breakdown. So I thought by including her in everything and having her in almost like, she, she's in a fight that she's not even supposed to be in. <laughs> like when she shows like in the dragon fight, like when she just randomly shows up, I'm like, okay, they're really putting this mm-hmm. character in here. Cause I'm hoping that they'll do the mental breakdown part with her. And that's the way they're gonna show how intense command school is because she has this breakdown and it just never, it never even happens at all for anyone. No one really super suffers in command school the way that I really wanted them to because mm-hmm. they really gloss over even Dragon Army and their day-to-day-to-day back-to-back-to-back battles where they're exhausted, they can't even eat. Like all of the that kind of piece to it just completely got glossed over. And then mm-hmm. Dragon Army is just fighting two people and they're like, they changed the rules of the game. I'm like, no, they did so much more had gone on before that. Um, so I was, I was a little just dis- disappointed. I feel like they could have added like two, get rid of the, the giant, the giants thing completely, like remove it straight up, add a little bit more battling and more tiredness from the characters having to battle constantly. And I think that to me, it would have been a much better movie. Yeah, I could see that. Although one thing I did like that they in some way managed to pull off in the movie was Ender's reaction to have finally commi- co- committed murder. I mean, at that point it being genocide, but like in um, the book, I think they make more of a point of him having like two confirmed kills before he enters the command school. Like, yep. you know, yeah, there was like uh, yep. the school bully and then Bonzo in the... Um, mm-hmm in the battle school which which like even like the latter one was more apparent to ender narratively that like he had actually killed someone where like up to that point it's all games to him like he as far as he's concerned he hospitalized those two children mm-hmm. um whereas I, th- I think i think there's a line uh before his like shore leave after battle school where, where they talk where they mentioned like well you didn't tell him about the third body that came back to earth what was the third body Bonzo. Wait, who? No, wait. Who's a who's the second then? Well, it, it was it was it was Ender and the Colonel, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, because they, they went back to Earth and, and like. Okay, I was uh, confused. I thought you were saying he had killed three people, and I was like, wait, what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah he killed he killed Harrison Ford. Spoiler yeah. alert. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that 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 was one. Uh, moment that I really had to give to to Butterfield for like you know, as, and even like the other the other tune leaders, like them watching the destruction of a planet and having like that final mental breakdown to like you know oh my god I just destroyed an entire alien race, mm-hmm. um like props to the like to their expressions in that like in that scene because God do you feel that? <laughs> yeah. I think it was an uh, interesting choice in that scene to not have the adults celebrate. Because in the yeah. book, Ender turns around and he sees the adults like actually like having a moment like, oh my gosh, yay, we did it. And in that moment, they don't have that. And I thought that was a really interesting choice. And I can't for the life of me figure out why that was changed. But then they like put it on the screen to show like Ender the whole situation. And then you get the reveal of what actually happened. But I thought there was the moment in the book where he's seen them celebrate and he's like, but why? Because yeah. he still thinks he just passed a test. And I think I wish that moment had happened because then mm. the reveal of just kidding, that was actually the war you won would have been more yeah. impactful. I think or it was like, good. I think it could have been better. Yeah, even like, you know, the just kidding, you're commanding real troops this entire time. Yeah, you know how you left those ships behind? Those were people ships. <laughs> yeah, as it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I guess like um, another, like, you know, Obviously, me being me, I have to give props to the composer for this movie because I don't know about you two, I love the music. 
I I can't say that anything stuck in my head from from the movie. I, I, I watched it this, this past week. I, I don't uh, recall anything. Mm-hmm. Sad to say, I, I I I might have to like go on YouTube and listen to to the soundtrack see if I can do that. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right, that's right. But I I I, I know t- typically like like uh, music and movies they they don't really they hit me unless it's like you know but, but some movie by uh, Christopher Nolan or something. You never know, like John well, I mean, Williams. <laughs> Yeah, yeah well, I, mean, it, I mean, it's hard not to get stuck in here when you're, when you're dealing with the Zim. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I find it cute that they set it up for a sequel movie. Right? So, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was like, oh, that's adorable. Uh, you guys had some high hopes. Yeah, yeah. like as, as much as I was fond of the way they ended up um, a- adapting this one, I don't know if it, if it set itself up for a sequel as much as they wanted it to. Yeah. No, no, Gosh no, no. no! There's not a single I, character that I want to know more about, like a, a prolonged story. Like, oh wow, this character's so interesting. I want to see what they do next. No, like you use yeah. Ender. He did his thing. He now has done the genocide <laughs> and <laughs> has a little bug friend. And why? I don't know. Like it doesn't. I'm glad. I'm personally glad I read the book first because I feel like I'd actually have way more questions having just watched the movie. He's like, mm-hmm. what are these bugs? How, what is this game? How do they communicate with him? I don't understand. Like, I don't get that from the movie. I didn't see that happening, but I know it was happening because I read the book. But otherwise, I would have been just very, very confused of just like, yeah. wait, I thought we were trying to kill the bugs. Because they also don't really land the fact that the buggers weren't necessarily trying to make everyone go extinct. Like, they were just yeah. trying to colonize a planet, realize there were people there, and were like, oh, shoot, peace out. And then the humans went and killed them all to stop future battles. Like humans are bad in this in this world, and they c- just kill a whole bunch of aliens. And it doesn't it doesn't I don't know it didn't land in the movie as much as it did in the book. Because in the book I like finished yeah. reading the book and I was like my stomach hurts. It gave me kind of District Nine feeling. If oh, like time. I don't because like after I watch District Nine, every time I have like I actually have like a stomach ache. It gives me a visceral reaction of just like how shitty humans are. And just how terrible certain situations are. And the book of this gave me that feeling. I was like, I feel nauseous. I feel sick. Humans are gross. This is weird. They did this to children. In in a similar way to the way the Hunger Games sometimes lands with me, where I'm like, there's literal children. The movie doesn't land it quite as well for Hunger Games, but it's children put in these situations. And like, they're tricking kids into thinking they're playing games. Like, think like your nine-year-old brother is playing Call of Duty, but just kidding, he's controlling a robot like across the country. But bigger scale, it's in space. Like that's crazy. That's an insane concept. And they don't yeah. like land it super well in the movie. Yeah, like like, like, that, that, like that book is surprisingly dark. <laughs> yes, yes. And the I, movie's I, like I, space I, action. <laughs> yeah, like like... like... I, I want to say that's a big issue with the movie and, and like the reason why a sequel would never work even regardless of the success of the first, uh, the, like the first movie doesn't know what it wants to be. Like it, it following a formula to success, like Harry Potter, he would have to be in battle school for several movies, but no, like th- if you're going to base it on the book, this is a war movie. Like they're, they're trying to create a commander but you don't feel that watching the movie. You're like, okay, this is a, this is a school movie. No, this is an alien invasion movie. Uh, no, not really. It, it, it's only till you reach the end where you find out, oh, okay, so so it, it was a war movie all along. Uh, but 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 like I guess tonally, it, it, it's just like jumping up and down between or, or jumping between genres, which is why like a, a sequel movie would be even weirder. Like uh, Speaker for the Dead. I I, I just finished. Uh, the audiobook a couple of weeks ago and and that one i don't know adapting that movie for a blockbuster sci-fi movie i, I don't think that would have worked but uh but, but, but yeah that's 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 another concern of the movie it's still not yeah. a bad bad movie no it's just yeah it, it, it's just it's an amazing book i think that's the issue like, like the book is so good and 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 the, the movie doesn't really capture how good the book is yeah i, I mean and, and i think like yeah, another big problem is that like the movie does wrap up several arcs within that. You know, like there's no there's nowhere to go with the, with the characters. Even like Ender getting the Hive Queen egg, there's really yeah. nowhere really to go with that. Without, I mean, you speak going back to your point, it being such a densely like you know, it, it is an amazing book that has like several things to say, but without saying those things, 
there's nowhere to take what was an action war movie mm-hmm. that, yeah. that had like yeah. only a, a a portion of the things to say about the nature of war and all that. Mm-hmm. Oh, because I was gonna say, I was gonna say like like it, it's it is unfortunate because it is like on its own without knowing anything about the book, it is an enjoyable movie. Like I do like that movie. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was going to say something positive about the movie, actually. The thing that I think they did a really good job with, besides the fact that they changed the rules of the game, the visuals of the anti-grav game worked really well. It looked so cool. But the little asteroid things, like, I, I, I just, it wasn't what I pictured, which sometimes hurts me when I, like, watch an adaptation. I'm like, no, that's not how I pictured it. It wasn't what I pictured, and it still worked so well. It got the entire idea across. The idea that they did get across really well, which was a huge part of the book that's smaller in the movie, was the whole thing that like puts Ender in his own category in terms of how he does the anti-grav is his just letting go of gravity of up is down and down is up and it doesn't matter and the enemy mm. is down. Um, they did that so well in the movie yeah. because yeah. he had that moment with uh, uh, Harrison Ford's character where he's like, haha, like you're horizontal. And watching it, you're like, I don't, what? what's going on and then you see him kind of put that into action with bean in the anti-grav room and it's so good the two of them having their moment in there where they're like freezing each other and kind of doing their it's i loved that scene like that worked it was a perfect like scene for me because it established what this game is what they're doing the idea of being anti-grav like there is no gravity there's no up and down there's north and west and this and that and like that was so cool. I loved it. The game looked so like I want to play. Honestly, it looked like so. Yeah, much honestly, fun. like, <laughs> like, like, like on, even like a, on a pure visual level, I feel like there aren't too many movies where I truly believe like the, the idea of zero gravity. They nail it in this movie, personally mm-hmm. speaking. Like, like it, it, you do feel that the, the abject lack of gravity. Yeah. Well, there's like one scene where they're looking in the tunnel and like the people walking in the tunnel are upside down and it zooms out and turns and there's something to that motion there that just like establishes this like zero g it's all chaos we're floating all over thing Mm -hmm. and it's so fun it's so cool i really enjoyed it and then like the double fight as much as i'm mad about it it was pretty cool like seeing them like cluster up and do their little thing that they did and like petra like (laughs) going out holding on to a lie where he's like her shield like they did a good job of adapting that kind of stuff. They completely got rid of his whole bend your knees, get shot in the knee thing, which I'm a little bit disappointed oh, yeah. about because that was the first third of the book. <laughs> it was all about that. Really smart. Yeah. But it would have been weird, I think, in the movie. But you could see like the resemblance of that in, the, in that scene in particular where they used their own bodies as shields for someone else. And that it worked really well. It looked so like so cool, so fun. Like the sci-fi in there was was really good. Um, though I'm a little bit visually, it looks great. I'm annoyed because technically the battle rooms are in the center of the station. The station rotates around it, so you can't mm-hmm. see into space while you're in there. Mm-hmm. But I love that you could in this one because it does add to that like anti gravity yeah. feeling. Yeah, that was a really cool change. Mm-hmm. But but is it better than Quidditch? <laughs> That's a tough one, actually. I mean, like, am I a traitor to the Harry Potter fans by saying yes? I've never in my life wanted to play Quidditch. Honestly, no. love Harry Potter. I've never been like, give me a broomstick. That looks like a good time. Yeah. Your butt would hurt so bad. Are you kidding? That would be the most uncomfortable thing ever. Like, you, you're getting injured. It's chaos. You would fall and die. Whereas in the anti-grav war simulator game, you can't die. You just get like frozen and then you're just floating around like, eh, and I love it. It's so fun. <laughs> like it's so good. Yeah. Cause they had like some funny poses. Like if you look in the background, some of the people are like doing like weird little arm moves cause they get like frozen in funny positions. And I just, mm-hmm. it's great. Like I love that. It's so, it's so cool. And they didn't do anything with the hook. Whereas like when he becomes a commander, he has like the thing that like can like propel him through that space. Yeah. That, just, that just doesn't exist. Yeah, Which well, honestly, I think, well, I'm okay well, I know, with. Well, I know it's like they had like one moment with the hook when like Harrison Ford's character is like introducing the mm-hmm. kids to the room and he's like, okay, let me put this this thing on. Boop, boop. Get over here. <laughs> yeah. That brings us to the big question of this show. If somebody wasn't familiar with Ender's Game, God forbid this is their first introduction, would you tell them to read it first or watch it first? I'll go. I'll go. I would tell them to watch it first. Um, because wow. I think 
I, I wish I had done that. I never, honestly, I don't very often wish that for myself. I love reading books, but I feel like I would have enjoyed the movie a lot more. And maybe if I had picked up on the questions that I had, that would have inspired me to read the book as just a casual person of like, oh, I wonder, you know, what this mean or what, what were they referencing here or whatever else it is. Oh, I wonder what the book does different. Um, so, but I think you can absolutely enjoy the movie quite a lot without reading the book. Whereas I think if you read the book first, like I did, and then watch the movie, you may not enjoy the movie as much as you could have because you're going to be questioning the things they changed like I did. <laughs> so <laughs> watch it, then read it if, if you are so inclined. Uh, I'm going to say the complete opposite. <laughs> read it. And, 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 and not just that, I'm, I'm going I'm to walk myself all over Michelle's opinion and say, read it and never watch it. Because if you want, <laughs> hold on. I, no, no, because I'll take it. It's like, if you watch it first, you're getting that amazing ending reveal spoiled for you mm. in, 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 in a way that doesn't live up to like uh, the, the rest of it. So, so like you, you'd want to read that fresh, get that ending fresh. Uh, be, because like it was really, it's really impactful, even though I knew it uh, reading uh, the book for the first time, it, 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 it's still like a huge impact. It's like, Ooh, that, that's uh, it's a lot darker than I thought it would have been. So, <laughs> so that's what I say. Uh, you, you don't really have to watch uh, watch this movie. <laughs> I changed my opinion. That's, I agree. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that you okay, but, okay. I, under the assumption you had to do both, I still stay with what I said. But yes, and per, you nailed for the ending. Yes, absolutely, yeah. the ending of the book, for sure, for sure. And then maybe watch, maybe read the book, and then watch all the anti gravity scenes on YouTube. <laughs> That's my answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'm going to running on run under the assumption that you that you were doing both. I would say I mean I would I would agree. Read it first. Um, but because I think the movie references like it, it does so it it make, it attempts to to reference so many minor points that like you don't really get unless you've read the book or and like the near extent of what's happening. So I think like, you know, if, if you didn't read the book, you would look at um, Bean's rope trick and think, okay, cool, that's a thing. They've changed the rules of the game. What do you mean by that? Um, and everything involving the, the bugger queens. So I think you understand way more and you can, you, you can leave the movie behind with that much more resolution if you read the book first. Fair enough. You can also look up the look, look up the anti grab on YouTube. It's really fun. Yeah, if you do nothing else, you <laughs> <at least do. laughs> All right. So this has been Reader Watch. Uh, you listened to us uh, wobble on about Ender's Game. Tell us what you thought in the comments. Like, like, and subscribe, and all that. I'm Ashton. I'm Michelle. And I'm Alex. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.